Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. If a ship had 26 sheep and 10 goats on board, how old is the ship's captain? A question set in a Chinese school uh, for 11 year olds as part of a maths exam. Not a mistake, the examiners apparently said that they wanted to test the students' critical awareness. And certainly it did that, it forced them to use their imagination and to enter into the answer with much more than just their head. One or two of them had a go, others gave up. Um, one thought that maybe 36 was the answer because the captain wanted uh, uh, the number of uh, sheep and goats on board to be the same as his age, 36. Or another one said, well, uh, you've got to be 18 to be captain of a ship, therefore it must be at least 18. Uh, and another one trying perhaps to get his own back on the examiners said, if a school had 26 teachers, and 10 of which weren't thinking, how old is the head teacher? But it struck me as being a valuable attempt to help the student to realise that there's more to life than can be worked out mathematically, more than facts and figures. The real truth of life is about imagination and about entering into whatever we're doing wholeheartedly with all that we are. The Scientist theologian Théard de Chardin uh, said to understand the world, knowledge is not enough. You must see it, touch it, live in its presence. And I think that's how I want to be, to realise that knowledge and wisdom come not from just mental activity, but from really engaging with life. There was a tradition that Jesus was part of called the wisdom tradition, part of the Hebrew tradition that he grew up in. Uh, and this was one reason why he told stories, because part of that tradition was to help people to come to wisdom, not just through the laying out of facts and, and uh, 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 things, commandments and so on, instructions, but to engage people's imaginations and, 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 and their whole, whole selves in responding to the teaching. And so Jesus uses parables to convey his message. And uh, indeed, he took the wisdom tradition uh, and it was carried forward to by Paul and other early Christians who saw in what Jesus did uh, a way of, of kind of overturning even that rather new idea of wisdom as opposed to knowledge. Uh, uh, Paul talks about wisdom as being something which uh, is about the giving of ourselves in love and in care for other people. God's wisdom, he, he suggests, one of God's major characteristics is a wisdom which is about giving of himself to us, uh, seen most uh, obviously in the giving of Jesus coming to be with us, to share our humanity and to die on the cross. God sees wisdom as something you gain, as it were, by that giving of ourselves in service to others. And so I'm going today to, I'm going to enjoy using my mind, because I do, uh, I'm sure you do too, but we also need to recognise that real wisdom comes when we wholeheartedly throw ourselves into life's mysteries, uh, to try and experience them, even if we can't understand them. And uh, uh, above all other mysteries, is the beauty and the joy that can come from serving others, of giving ourselves to other people in, in, in care for them and in uh, trying to, to meet their needs in whatever way we're able to. That's the kind of wisdom which God showed, which St Paul recognises many people call foolishness. But it is, for many, the pathway to true wisdom and indeed to true life.